Hello and welcome to God's Word for today. My name is Brenda Gross. It's good to be with you. Good to be in the house of the Lord. It's truly a pleasure to come into God's house, what we call God's house here on earth, and have church fellowship together. And you know what? The Lord is in us. And the Bible says that we are the temple. So we're really God's house. But it's good to come to a place in the name of the Lord, specifically to worship him with other believers and give him praise and glory and honor. And the Bible says to fail not to assemble ourselves together in their strength and numbers. Because you know what? Exhort, we can exhort each other and the Bible tells us to. And he's given gifts to the church. He's given them, well, the five-fold ministries, we call it, to the church to teach us, to preach to us, to build us up, to edify us for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, till we all come into the measure of the stature of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Unto a perfect man. That perfect man does not mean flawless. It means mature. Mature. Till we all grow up in Christ. Praise God. And we can. We can grow up in Christ Jesus. And how many knows that when we're born again, when we've made Jesus... Christ accepted him as our Savior and made him the Lord of our lives, then there's a growing process. And we have to have our mind renewed too by the Word of God. The Bible says, Desire the sincere milk of the gospel that you may grow thereby. So if we didn't need to grow, the Bible wouldn't have said that. So we need to grow. We need to grow up in him and become mature. See, he's our measuring stick. Christ is the measuring stick. And our goal is to be like him, is to be just exactly like him and to be one with him. And you know what? It's possible to do that or the Bible wouldn't have said that, that we could. God's word is so important to us. And we are without excuse. If we can read, we are without excuse. When we fail to read the Word of God and pray and draw close to God, let Him draw close to us. David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Limitation said, my eye affects my heart. And I think it was John, along about chapter 4, said, take heed what you hear. And you say, well, Brenda, who do I listen to? See, we just don't need to listen to anybody because the Bible says in 2, I think it's 2 Peter, that there's people that argue and twist the scriptures and rest or wrestle with them or twist that word rest and the Greek means twist on it brother her means twist so there's people that twist the scriptures you say well if I'm a baby how do I know who to listen to well check their spirits if anybody comes across as you know just all time wanting to argue about the Bible. Every time you see them, they have an argument about the Word. Or, you know, they come off, you know, in condemnation and just talking about everybody else. And, well, you know what? Check that person, spirit. Ain't that good? Check that person. Because I'll tell you what, 
nine times out of ten, they're well, ten times out of ten, they're not preaching the word of God. They've got a wrong spirit. So we need to be careful. Do you know there's people still writing books today? Still making CDs and stuff like that? Sermons? That are like that? So we need to be careful and watchful who we listen to. Because how many knows that not everybody is perfectly right in everything they say? Not everybody. By... You know, by reason of ignorance, of doctrines. You know, not every because the Bible says we know in part. So not everybody is completely right about everything. That's the reason it's so important to get in the Word of God and get the Word of God in us so that we can know, so that we can come into maturity, so we can know who to listen to and who is teaching us right. 